Hallelujah. What a joy it is to worship him in song. There is no God like our God. This is Minister Pat Holmes coming to you live once again from the secret place and again decreeing the covenant blessings of the Father upon you, your household, every situation and circumstance that pertains to you. I want to remind you again that Jesus is Lord. All power in heaven and earth is in his hand. He taught us to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He also taught us to pray, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Oh, glory to God. Well, I'm going to jump into tonight's Bible study. I am so excited. I've been working on this outline a couple of days. It has downloaded in me. Now I'm ready to upload it out to you, and it is going to be a blessing, a full course meal. I was walking in my house the other day praying, and out of my spirit came this phrase to my shock, I mean, a good shock. And all of a sudden, I heard myself saying, Lord, immerse me in your Holy Ghost mikvah. And it stopped me in my tracks as I meditated on that. I had studied on the mikvah several years ago, but I have studied some more, and I'm going to share that with you, and you are going to be blessed. Let me show you a picture of the ancient mikvah. Mikvah was a collection of water. It was running water, and it was used for ritualistic bath, purification bath. Now, the person who was the priest, the priest would enter into the purification bath. The Bible teaches us in the book of Revelation, we are priests and king. So they would enter in if they had come in contact with a dead body, anything that was dead. They had to immerse themselves in that purification bath. Also, in preparation for service in the house of the Lord for the high holy days. But here's the part that blessed me. Women had to immerse in this purification bath. They had to immerse after their monthly cycle. If they had had a child at the appropriate time after the childbirth, they would have to immerse in the waters of purification. But here's the one that got me. They had to immerse in the purification's water before they would be intimate with that groom, before they would enter into marriage. Glory to God. And I want to remind you, we the bride, we're getting ready to be received up by our groom. There's going to be a consummation of the spiritual marriage and contract. Glory to God. Again, these were running waters. I need to bring out that the person immersing in these waters would have had to already had a bath to take care of the natural hygiene because this was symbolic of spiritual cleansing. As a matter of fact, in my teaching, in my study, and I found out that it meant gateway to purity. They knew that it was a spiritual application associated with immersing yourself in the waters of the mikvah, the collection of natural running waters. I want to show you a picture of modern day mikvahs that they now uh, put in uh, some of the temples and synagogues and that just looks like, you know, like what we call our baptismal pool. But they mixed in natural waters with that. I was studying on how they do it now. But anyway, don't have time to develop all of that. That's the picture of the mikvah. And uh, let me look at my notes, make sure I didn't leave anything out. I don't think so. I covered all of that. We're going to do this Bible study tonight by graphics. I prepared graphics and uh, could take me a while to get some of them up because I, I have them all the way around the borders and it, it'll take a minute to open them up. But we're going to go strictly with these graphics tonight because I want to take you right now. This is a depiction of the Garden of Eden. And we all know in the book of uh, Genesis chapter Chapter 2, it talks about the Garden of Eden. And I want to uh, mention that in the Garden of Eden, well, I'm going to show you the graph. It, it, it brings it out because we're going to make a comparison. The Garden of Eden then and the Garden of Eden now. The word Eden means pleasure. Let me open this up so you can see that. And you remember God himself is the one, the Bible says, he planted the garden. And I'm finding my little red dots. Let me get over here. Red dot, would you open up, please? There it is. The word Eden means pleasure. And we know that we are now God's garden. The Bible says we are a water 
uttered, Gordon. It is has, has been uttered by the prophet Isaiah, as well as the prophet, I think it was the prophet Ezekiel. I found it in two places, where we are the watered Gordon. But we also know in the New Testament, Jesus is teaching. He's teaching us that Father God is the husband man, and that uh, he is the uh, vine, and we have to be on the vine. You remember that teaching? So it is an analogy dealing with us as plants in the garden, plantings in the garden. Another passage talks about the plantings of the Lord. So we are compared to the garden. So back in the days of old, the garden of Eden was pleasure. God again planted the garden. Adam and Eve were placed in the garden for God's pleasure. But now we are the garden. The Bible speaks of a first Adam. We know that first Adam sinned and messed up and was banished from the garden. But the Bible also speaks of a last Adam and his name is Jesus. I want you to see that the word garden here means enclosure. It means enclosed garden. And figuratively speaking, again, it speaks of us, the bride. We are his garden. Now, as I refer back to the first garden, the garden that was in Eden, that garden had a river, had a, a river in it that flowed out into four rivers. And I want to show you uh, what that was uh, symbolic of. Let me see, make sure I haven't lost this little graphic. I want to show you this because I am going to, going to compare it to us now, the garden of God, and show you the type and shadow. You know, the Bible says the things that were written of old were written for our understanding. And the Bible is like layers. You can pull it back and through revelatory knowledge, God will reveal some things to us. Now let's look at these four uh rivers that flowed out of that garden here in Genesis 2 and verse 10 and it says and a river went out of Eden remember Eden means pleasure it says to water the garden and from this it was parted and became into four heads or four rivers now here they are the river Pison and I want you to grab the meaning of thee this is when I shouted the river Pison it means increase then the second river that flowed. It was the river Gihon, and it means bursting forth. Oh, glory to God. Some of you are getting it already. Increase, bursting forth, and then the next river was called Hittikel, and it means rapid, and then the last river, Euphrates, fruitfulness. Now let's put all of that together because the Bible says man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He'll take a natural word, a natural teaching and turn it into a rhema word, a right now word that we can grab onto and hold on to. Out of that garden flowed increase. Out of that garden flowed Bursting, bursting forth out of that garden. It meant rapid. And do you see that as a prophetic word to you tonight? And then fruitfulness. Oh, glory to God. And I brought out that the Lord has compared us modern day to a garden. We are his garden of pleasure. Now I want you to see something that Jesus said in the scripture concerning us the garden. I hope I haven't mixed up my graphics. If I have, I will just tell it because I know it. Glory to God, that's not it. I'll put it up here in just a moment. But you remember what he brought out and when he stood up and he cried out, if any man thirsts and if they come after him, he gave us a promise, we his garden, we his pleasure. He told us that out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to know that it is a play or it refers back to what flowed out of the Garden of Eden. That river with the four heads. That river that meant, let me see, can I pull it up there again? It meant increase. It meant bursting forth. It meant rapid. And it also meant fruitfulness. That now flows out of us. He said it refers to the Holy Spirit. When he spoke it, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because he had not yet been glorified. But thank God, aren't you glad that he 
he has been glorified now and that he has given us the Holy Spirit to invade. We can immerse in him and out of him shall flow, glory to God, rivers of living water. We are a people that can increase in him. And I'm not speaking of just finances. Yes, he does all of that, but we need to have vision for kingdom increase. One of the things that we pray every night is revival in the land. May it break forth in us. May it break forth in our city. May it break forth in the USA. May it break forth in nations already. We should be a people speaking increase. I love what, oh, what was the powerful man of God from Germany? I, uh, uh, Brother Reinhard Bunke. This is what he used to say. We have to plunder hell in order to populate heaven. Isn't that awesome? So out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Increase glory to God. Fruitfulness is going to flow out rapidly. And it means, uh, what was the other meaning that I had? But it had to do with uh, an abruption, an abrupt increase. I can't find it right now. But I'll put it back on there before we close out this teaching. So as we go forward again, we're talking about the words that came out of my mouth on that day when I was praying. Lord, immerse me in your Holy Ghost mikvah in that running water, that living water, that purification bath. And one of the meanings, I don't know if I mentioned this before, they said that it was symbolic of a gateway to purity. See, as the bride gets ready to stand by his side, the Lord has already said that the bride will have to be washed. We got to get rid of the blemishes and the spots and the wrinkles. And that is referring in a spiritual sense. We can't be living any kind of way and expect to go up when the groom comes to receive us. We all remember the story of those ten virgins. Five were ready and they went to the wedding, but five got left behind. I want to say see law. Pause and think about it. Now we're going to finish the rest of this teaching just through my graphics. I want to open this up because we're dealing with water. We're dealing with waters of purification. And as I was studying concerning Noah's flood, this is what this picture represents. One theologian brought out that it was symbolic of the baptizing of planet Earth itself. Baptizing is so very important. You know, Jesus commanded that. When we look at that in the New Testament, I'll show you a graphic of that a little later. When people said, I do to Jesus, come into my heart, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I ask you to come in and be my Savior and Lord. They were baptized because there is so much spiritual, spiritual, what's the word I'm looking for? Death and emphasis concerning baptism. It just brings us so many spiritual benefits. It is symbolic of so much. So one commentary brought out that in this it was the baptizing of the earth itself because so much sin had been committed. And if you remember, God told Noah to build the ark. And out of all the people that were on earth at that time, only Noah and his family were saved. Now that's a whole lot to think about. Only eight people were saved. We're dealing with water. We started off, as you see on my background graphic, I have flowing water because the uh, the mikvah, it was running water, running natural water. I'm trying to make these dots come up here to get that to go off. There it goes. Let me just pull up my next picture. I'm not even sure what order I have them in, but I will explain as I bring them up. We all remember this. We're dealing with water. We're dealing with immersion. And you remember when Noah led the people out of Egypt and God had that Red Sea open up. Moses held up that rod and it opened up. Glory to God. And they went down into the Red Sea and it was a dry bed and God took his people over to the other side. Do you know the Bible related that as a type of baptism when they went through that Red Sea? It says that they were baptized there in that Red Sea. We're talking about 
waters of immersion. I want to go over here to this graphic. Oh, this one here is so good because I'm going to have a part one and a part two to this. This depicts when Joshua had brought the people to the Jordan River. Now remember Moses led them through the Red Sea, but Moses was taken home and Joshua was the leader that led them through the Jordan River over into the promised land. Joshua was instructed to send the priests out Again, God made a dry riverbed, and those priests had to go out with the Ark of the Covenant. That is what is depicted that they're carrying there, the Ark of the Covenant covered in blue fabric. And when they went out there with that Ark of the Covenant, that's really when that water parted and the dry bed came and the people were escorted across again. But I want you to know the Bible uh, teaches that Jesus, oh glory to God, when he came on the scene, you know, Joshua was a type and shadow of Jesus. There are so many types and shadows in the Bible, and I love them. Things that are fulfilled. So Joshua stood there at the Jordan River, and the Bible says, oh, I almost forgot this part. The Bible says how the rivers, they move back, all the way back to the city of of Adam. Now did you catch that? The city of Adam. That's where the sin started. In the city of Adam. So when, when he stepped in that water, Joshua, the waters moved back to the cities of Adam. It was a type and shadow of what Jesus was going to do. Look at this picture. Some of you are going to be able to follow me. Jesus came to that same Jordan River. Oh, glory to God. And when he got ready to step in, that's a picture of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. John the Baptist didn't understand. He said, you need to be baptizing me because he knew who Jesus was. They were cousins, by the way. And Jesus said, suffer it or allow it, permit it to be so for now, because righteousness had to be fulfilled. I want to share with you that he was fulfilling what the first Joshua had done. When Joshua stepped into the Jordan River and the waters rolled back to the city of Adam, that happened in a natural sense. But when Jesus stepped into the Jordan River, he had to fulfill or complete in a spiritual setting what Adam what Joshua had done in the natural. He rolled the waters of sin, glory to God, all the way back to the city of Adam. We were forgiven for our sin. That's when the iniquity started, when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. There are so many beautiful types and shadows in the Bible, in the Word of God. I'm just going to move that up there. So Jesus had to fulfill or finish or complete Complete what Joshua had done when he stepped into the water all of those years prior. And then I want to mention, because we're talking about immersion tonight, do you remember the story of Philip? Philip was an evangelist, and he was preaching in another city, and the Bible brings out how there were multitudes being saved and being baptized. And all of a sudden, God translates Philip over out to the desert to this man. He was a eunuch and he was over Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. He was over her treasure. He was sitting there on a chariot reading the Bible and really didn't have the understanding of what he was reading, but had a desire to understand. Philip was translated. God still does that. Philip ran and caught up with the chariot and we know he explained to him the scripture. And the eunuch says to Philip, there is some water. What stops me from being baptized? Oh, glory to God. I tell you, there needs to be an immersion, not only in the baptism waters of salvation, but in the spiritual mikvah, purification, that we can be ready for the groom. And this is a picture depicting when the eunuch was baptized, and we know the gospel went back to his country through him. And then I wanted to bring this out because we're dealing with the mikvah, we're dealing with waters of purification, 
purification. We're dealing with being immersed. And this one is so precious. Before Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane and would shortly afterwards on the day of today die on the old rugged cross. You remember he met with his disciples in the upper room. And you remember he had a foot washing. Glory to God. And I was reading it just the other day and Peter was like, oh no, no Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And the Lord let him know in that passage, if I don't wash your feet, you're not a part of me. And Jesus made a statement. He said that you're already clean. Some of you, because you see Judas was sitting at the table. You're already clean. That meant they had already gone through initial, the salvation. They'd already been cleansed through that and been forgiven. But he let it be known that the feet get dirty. Sometimes on this walk, we can trip and fall and we can uh, get contaminated. Oh, but I thank God. The water the living water still there to wash us, purify us, and make us whole. So I wanted to just bring that out about that foot washing that he did there on that occasion at the Last Supper. Again, we were talking about the mikvah. Let me just put that picture back up here. I think I still have it over here, the ancient mikvah. And it was, again, the running waters. And I was uh, thinking of that song that Brother Swaggart made so popular years ago. Jesus, Jesus, and the song says, Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit make me whole. Jesus offers living waters. He said to us, the bride, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Did I mention tonight, if I didn't, let me mention it. It is said in the Mishra, that is a, uh, a book uh, written by uh, the Jewish rabbis, sort of like what we would call a commentary, where they get together and uh, they look at the scriptures, dissect the scriptures, and they write up, and they look at history, and they write the meaning of the scripture. And it is said in the Mishra that Adam, when he was banished from the Garden of Eden, that he would sit in one of those four rivers that I talked to you about. He would sit in that river trying to repent, realizing that he had been banished out the garden and he had lost his place of perfection. And it was a type of, Lord, I'm sorry, but you know, that didn't accomplish it. It took the last Adam to undo all that the first Adam had messed up. Oh, glory to God. I thank God for the Holy Ghost mikvah that exists for all of us today. I thank God that there are living waters still flowing and that we can step into those living waters. Again, it speaks of spiritual significance. We have to come to the Lord and say, Lord God, immerse me, immerse me, wash me, deliver me from evil. We need to do a checkup on ourselves. We all know what our weaknesses are. If we fall prey to lying, Lord God, immerse me in your Holy Ghost mikvah. Deliver me from the spirit of lying, whatever it is. If we find ourselves with sticky fingers and we're stealing, Lord, immerse me in your Holy Ghost mikvah, in your living waters. We know his name is Jesus. Deliver me, Lord God, from the spirit of stealing, or uh, whatever the weakness is, this is the time. Remember I said the bride, before it was time for the consummation of the marriage with the groom, she would go down into the mikvah for spiritual purification. He's coming soon. Are you ready? Are you ready? Have you confessed your weaknesses unto him? And with that living water that's on the inside of you, symbolic of the power of the Holy Ghost, have you attacked the squatters that are resting in your land. We all know what the squatters are. They'll sit on land illegally. I'm sure you've studied about squatters. They'll come on your land, your territory, and if you don't discover them soon enough, after they've been there for a while, they can demand a legal right to stay there. That's by law. So we have to go in the land, in the guard, check to see what's squatting inside of us that doesn't need to be there. Are we people that are bound up by a spirit of horror? Are we just bound out up by just just carnal? 
carnal. God wants a spiritual bride again that has dealt with her blemishes and her spots. And the other weeks, week I spoke on her wantonness and her lasciviousness and her inordinate affection bound up by the thing that the enemy tries to clothe us in. That's why I love the teaching of David. All of you remember when David got ready to go out and face Goliath, bring down the giants. See, we have to bring down the giants in our life. And you remember King Saul tried to clothe David in his armor. David put it on and he couldn't move in that armor. That armor was too heavy. And David pulled it off. And he walked out there clothed in what he had on. The clothing of a shepherd boy. And he picked up, remember, he picked up five smooth stones. But it only took one to bring Goliath down. Oh, glory to God. And that is exactly what we have to do. Clothe ourselves in the power of God. Drive the squatters of the land. Bring down the Goliaths in our life. And that way, we are brothers and sisters immersing ourselves in the Holy Ghost mikvah, a bride being prepared for the groom. Glory to his name. Father, we thank you for the teaching of the word of the mikvah. We thank you, Lord, the purification bath is still available in your presence through the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. We can be purified. We thank you, Lord God, for your hand upon each one of us. I'm reminded right now of Queen Esther, Lord God, before she, Lord, could consummate her marriage with the king, be with the king, she had to go through a 12-month purification process. The Bible teaches us uh, that some things were things rubbed on the skin to purify the skin, and some things were, and, and to put on a cosmetic, but some things were things rubbed in to purify the skin. The rubbed on was the cosmetics looking at good on the outside, but the other ointments again rubbed in to help purify. It's time to rub in the word of God. Purify ourselves. We don't want to be left behind. Father, again, I thank you for the teaching of this word. I thank you, Holy Ghost, that you're downloading it in each one, that we're checking ourselves. And even as you said in the New Testament, Jesus, we're pulling off, we're plucking out stuff that doesn't need to be inside of us, and we're putting on the righteous garments as a bride prepared for her groom. In Jesus' name, we decree these things. God bless you. This is Minister Pat Holmes signing off. And until next time, shalom, which means peace.